The Greater New Bedford Community Health Center monthly video series is brought to you by Senior Whole Health, a health plan for seniors that have both Medicare and Mass Health coverage. Online at seniorwholehealth.com. Welcome to the Greater New Bedford Community Health Center. We will be presenting a series of seminars which we hope will inform the community and our staff about the benefits which are available to the people that we serve. Good afternoon, my name is Peter Gijopoulos and I'm the CEO of the Greater New Bedford Community Health Center. I am very honored and pleased to welcome Dr. Marshall Montgomery, the uh, director of our Greater New Bedford Dental Program, and he'd like to speak to you about dental care for the elderly. Thank you very much, Dr. Montgomery. Uh, as Peter said, I'm Dr. Montgomery um, over at the, uh, the dental center next door. And today I'm gonna be talking to you guys briefly about um, dental issues that are uh, affect really everyone, but uh, with a special focus on senior citizens and uh, the older members of our community. The first thing to note is uh, that the older adult population is growing exponentially. This chart shows that right now we have about 35 million older adults, 65 or older, and that's expected to nearly double in the next 20 years. The other big difference between uh, older adults today and maybe older adults from the past generation is uh, that many of them still have a lot of their teeth, and, and so that comes uh, into play into how we treatment plan and how everything goes, and, and we'll talk more about that. So what are the main issues that affect the elderly? Well, certainly tooth loss is going to be the first one that, that comes to mind and, and getting dentures and things along those lines. But as I mentioned, uh, people are hanging on to their teeth a lot more um, for a lot, a lot longer nowadays. And so the emphasis is moving away from just giving people dentures to preserving and restoring the teeth that they still have and, and treating cavities and, and more importantly, finding cavities um, to treat them as opposed to ignoring them and, and then the only option is to, to remove the tooth. So uh, the most common type of cavity that we see in older people is what we call root caries or um, and then the other type would be coronal which would be the top uh, part of the tooth. Uh, the root caries are the ones that you can see like if you pull down somebody's lip and, and you're looking at the front part of their tooth. Um, other issues, if a patient does have dentures, um, you know, things can go wrong with dentures. Sometimes people get a set of dentures and they think that's it, you know, 40 years later, you know, they've still got the same set and, and you know, we're trying to get people to come in after they have a set of dentures made to get things kind of checked out for, uh, for several reasons, which I'll talk about later. Um, one of which is uh, annual oral cancer screenings. Um, Another one is just to check the fit of the dentures and to not kind of lose track of, uh, of people as they get a set of dentures to think that, you know, that's it. They never should come back to the dentist again. Um, the other issue, if you don't get cavities uh, that might cause you to lose your teeth would be periodontal disease. That's when you lose the bone supporting the teeth uh, and the teeth can get loose and sometimes have to be removed. I also wanted to talk briefly about dry mouth or, or xerostomia is the scientific name for that and that can be caused by a, a number of things certainly just the amount of saliva that we have as we get older decreases but uh, as we're taking more and more medications many of those uh, cause our saliva to be reduced and certain problems are associated with that when you lose your saliva you're, you lose your body's uh, natural ability to take care of uh, you know the bugs and everything that are causing problems for your teeth that cause cavities and then lastly Cancer and precancer is a, is a big problem. As people are living longer, cancer is taking kind of a driver's seat uh, as far as problems that, that people are living to see. If, uh, if they're living past the chance of getting heart attacks and everything, it, ultimately it's probably going to be cancer that gets them. And so it, one of the things that the dentist regularly checks for is, uh, is oral cancer. The type of cavities that we most often see in senior citizens are, uh, are root caries. Caries is another word for the disease process that causes cavities. One issue that comes to mind is that older adults probably grew up without fluoride in their water supplies because that was something that came to fruition uh, in the 1950s. And then even in New Bedford, I, I think has only happened um, in the past uh, 10 or 15 years or so. So, and there's still many communities that don't have fluoride in their water. Um, but as a rule of thumb, older adults uh, most likely did not grow up with fluoride in their water, and, and so they may be presenting with uh, 
you know, cavities and, and other problems that um, you may take for granted if you're, if you're practicing or providing care in a community that has had regular fluoridation for, uh, for many decades. The fundamentals of how you get cavities, those haven't changed. Just like for children, if you eat a lot of sugar, you're more likely to get cavities. It's the same for adults and for children. The other thing is that if you've gotten a lot of cavities in the past, some patients may say, oh, I have weak teeth, I've always gotten cavities. It tends to actually be kind of true. If you've gotten a lot of cavities in the past, you're more likely to get them in the future. And so that's why it's important to, uh, to regularly come to the dentist for checkups and uh, so we can take care of things early on before they become a problem. Certainly the best way to deal with preventing cavities is brushing and flossing. That will always be true. And then again, regular checkups are, uh, are equally as important. For older adults, sometimes we notice problems um, using a manual toothbrush. You know, as they get older, it gets harder to kind of manipulate a toothbrush and really get in there and clean like they used to. And they may not realize this. Um, and so over at the dental center, we try to emphasize um, using like a power toothbrush because it's able to just reduce so much more of the plaque and everything. And, and it's really a lot easier. You know, you just kind of hold it there and uh, it just kind of does the work for you. And uh, certainly it's a lot easier if you have arthritis or any kind of uh, limitations like that. So as we had talked about dentures is uh, kind of the, the default that we think about older adults having. Um, this, this here is a picture of a set of complete dentures, which would mean that it's replacing all of your natural teeth. Nowadays, a lot of times we're making partial dentures, which hook on to uh, your remaining natural teeth and just replace the ones that are missing to try to uh, preserve uh, the teeth that you have that are still good. Um, it's important to have teeth to chew on um, because you'll be healthier because you, uh, you have proper nutrition. If, you, if you're not eating properly, you're not going to be able to, uh, you know, provide your body with the sustenance that you need to, uh, to fight off disease and, and uh, your overall health status. Um, oftentimes, especially in Massachusetts, dentures are covered by insurance. At the health center, our fees are very low to begin with, but often many of the state insurances um, cover them in full. Uh, we, we encourage you to, uh, to stop by, and I'll talk about um, how to get, at that, get that information later, um, you know, to make an appointment, to come in, and, and we can go over everything and, and talk about insurance. And, but generally in Massachusetts, um, dentures are covered usually in full, but, uh, you know, we go over all of that at our, uh, our first appointment um, at the health center, at the dental center. So if you already have a set of dentures, they tend to not fit as well over long periods of time. You know, we have people that come in that got a set of dentures 20 or 30 years ago, and that was it. And unless they lose them or they break in half, they just kind of, you know, work with them. But we encourage people to come in earlier than that. You know, we actually say every year uh, to see if things are starting to change, see if they're not fitting. You know, they can um, cause sore spots, even if they fit very well in the beginning. You know, as you age, Things tend to change, like the layout of your jaws, the, uh, the gums, the architecture of all that. It tends to change as you get older. It generally shrinks, and so the dentures don't fit as well. It can cause rubbing and uh, rough edges and, you know, just be loose. And many of these things can be fixed without having to uh, go completely through the process of getting a new denture made, which, you know, can be time intensive and, and discourages some people, but oftentimes we can fix a lot of these. Even if they're broken in half, we can often um, repair them without having to, uh, to completely make a new one. Sometimes it is, uh, it is needed to make a new one, though. And so if we can't fix it, we are able to make new ones at the dental center. Denture care, a couple points about that. If you already have a set of dentures, you're going to want to uh, take them out every night so your gums and everything can heal and uh, so they don't uh, you know, get abraded and, and raw from wearing the dentures all day. And you're going to want to uh, get all the you know, food and, and all, the, all the junk that's on them completely off just under running water over the sink and you can use a, uh, like a toothbrush or a soft denture brush with some denture cleaning paste to remove any deposits or anything on there. You don't want to use regular toothpaste because it, over time it's actually too harsh for the materials that dentures are made of. Toothpaste is fine for your teeth but you don't, you don't want to use it to clean your dentures. And then you want to soak your dentures overnight. You can soak them in water, and sometimes they have little tablets that you can drop in that kind of like bubble, they effervesce, and clean the dentures. But you don't want to leave them out on the table because they can actually dry out and warp, and then they won't fit anymore. Unfortunately, there's not an easy way to kind of undo that. So you want to take your dentures out every night and soak them after you've cleaned them. And you definitely don't want to put them in the dishwasher. That's something that people sometimes do. The harsh chemicals in the dishwasher and then the heating, the, the drying cycle will warp them too.
One of the major problems that we see, especially with patients taking a lot of medications, is dry mouth. Now, dry mouth can be more than just uh, you know a bother, like an annoyance. It can uh, it can really eliminate your body's ability to get rid of you know the plaque and the bugs that are on your teeth that cause cavities and gum disease. There are several ways to kind of deal with that. Usually, eliminating or altering medications to completely get rid of dry mouth is not an option. So what we suggest is you drink lots of water to stay hydrated and, and just that water kind of mixes with the stuff in your mouth and can kind of help to clean your teeth and prevent cavities and everything. And then we also suggest fluoride rinses. Fluoride, um, it's present in, in the water supply, at least in this municipality, but it's also good to buy a separate mouthwash that has fluoride like Axe in it that strengthens your teeth. It can actually stop small cavities from getting bigger and stop them from requiring fillings. And then there's another product called uh, Biotene, and I think there are other ones too, more generic ones. It's actually billed as a uh, saliva replacement. And this is something that you can kind of take with you throughout the day. They have smaller bottles, and you can kind of, you know, swish around with it, and it, it serves a couple of purposes. It, it's going to coat your cheeks and your tongue and your gums and everything and keep them healthy. And then it's also going to do, as I mentioned, similar to saliva, it's going to be able to kind of wash the bugs away from your teeth to stop cavities from forming and... Uh, it also works uh, a little bit to help um, gum disease from getting worse. Unfortunately, in our, in our community, we still see a lot of people using tobacco, principally smoking, even with senior citizens. And it definitely increases the risk of oral cancer, which is, uh, which is a big problem. And so, of course, you know, we're always going to recommend that you stop smoking and, and you do it right away. But um, some of the things that you may not realize that uh, smoking can adversely affect, especially dentally related, is if you have a tooth removed, you know, if you can't save it and you have to have a tooth extracted. If you're regularly smoking, you can get a painful condition called a dry socket, which it's not an infection, but it's a painful healing process that uh, will resolve on its own, but it really makes having a tooth removed a, uh, an unpleasant experience. On a chronic basis, smoking can actually cause your dentures over time to not fit as well because it accelerates the loss of bone. It causes your jaws to lose bone and to kind of shrink, and, and the dentures, which were made off the molds you know, years ago, uh, just eventually won't fit anymore. And so we always uh, encourage people, again, to, to quit smoking or, or to, to really reduce. Even reducing smoking has been shown to, uh, to have um, lots of benefits. And then from a more superficial basis, that you know, bad breath and discolored teeth, those are strongly associated with smoking. We don't have any real treatments for those. If you continue to smoke, you know, we can, you know, temporarily kind of fix or, or better those things. But if you're still smoking, it's just going to come right back. Oral cancer, the risk increases with age. It's, uh, it's cumulative, which means that, um, you know, the longer you live, the chance of you getting cancer increases. And with head and neck cancers, it's very strongly associated with smoking or drinking alcohol, especially over a long period of time. And so every time you come to the dentist, especially during the annual exams, we do a, a check for oral cancer. You know, we kind of feel around your lymph nodes and your neck and your jaw and your jaw joints. And we look at your tongue and, you know, your, uh, your tonsils and, uh, you know, just make sure that if everything looks okay, great. If not, that, uh, you know, maybe we need to send you out to the oral surgeon for like a biopsy. But it's something that even if you only have dentures where, you know, oh, you know, why do I need to come to the dentist? I just have dentures. I don't have any teeth. Well, if you don't come, you know, there's a chance that you can still get oral cancer underneath of your dentures and uh, it, it won't get discovered until maybe, you know, it could be too late. You may notice now you have this big bump and your dentures don't fit. Um, and that's something that could have been caught a lot earlier, maybe removed um, before it got to the point where, you know, you have like a tumor growing that's so big it, it's interfering uh, with the fit of your dentures. The dental center is located next to the health center. It's actually right next to the eye center on the same block. And we have, uh, we have a nice marquee sign there so you can find us. And we're open at least uh, until 8 a.m. until at least 4 p.m. every weekday. We also have um, evening and weekend appointments available to, uh, to try to accommodate everyone. We recently hired uh, a third dentist, which will be starting this summer. And so we're going to uh, hope to offer even more appointments, even on Saturdays, um, which we have right now, but even more Saturdays. This is our phone number um, to call and make appointments. This is direct to the dental center, so uh, you don't need to go through uh, the switchboard at the health center. And that number is 508-984-7031. One of the things that uh, a lot of our patients are concerned with is uh, you know, insurance coverage and what kind of services are available to them at the dental center. We've recently expanded them uh, 
we opened in 2002 and we didn't used to make dentures, but now we do. And um, the first thing you'll do before you uh, get seen by the dentist generally is, uh, is stop by the benefits department if you haven't already, if you don't already have uh, coverage um, that you're aware of through the, the medical side, the health center. And uh, the benefits office will be able to um, you know, walk you through the process and, and get coverage arranged um, if you're eligible um, to verify eligibility or, or prove income. Uh, generally people, especially older adults, you can verify through Social Security or uh, you can bring in you know, pension check, um, you know, tax returns, pay stubs, things like that. Uh, and, and we don't turn anybody away. We, uh, we see everybody. So even if you're concerned about your ability to pay, you know, c come down and, you know, we'll take a look. Um, we do our best to, to squeeze in emergencies that same day. And the benefits office is, uh, is also open Monday through Friday, uh, 8.30 to 4. And uh, their phone number is 508-992-6553. And that's uh, generally where you're going to start before you get to see the dentist as far as like, you know, getting coverage and allaying all of those concerns that you might have. Let's see if anybody has any questions. Yes. To the best of your knowledge regarding insurance. Yes. Um, all, ins all insurance is accepted? All. All of them? Yeah, even, even if the people come in with insurances that, you know, we've never heard of and, uh, you know, as long as they have some kind of phone number to call the insurance company, you know, we call. Sometimes insurance companies require offices to be like credentialed with them. Um, and so that's not something that can be done that day. That's like a, unfortunately, a several week process. But, but basically we take all insurances. I would say 95% of them were totally credentialed with. Um, and so, you know, we're already on like their provider list. It's no problem. Um, in the rare case that you have some kind of, some flavor insurance that we don't take, um, we'll work on taking it. It might not be that immediate though. So in the case of um, an elder that has Medicare, um, they have their Part D plan, which is for their medicines, um, but they don't have a they don't have supplemental insurance that would possibly carry dental insurance. Would you do like a third party billing in that if that person if that elder came to the Council on Aging? and we were able to help that person out financially with his or her dentures, um, in this case, her dentures, um, would you accept that type of billing? Um, so th that's a good question. Um, so to paraphrase your question, like if we have somebody that has uh, Medicare without dental coverage, uh, do we make some kind of arrangements for um, like, like to bill them or third party billing? Um, Generally, in that case, uh, and, that, and that happens a lot, um, they stop by the benefits office and they, uh, as long as they have some kind of proof of income and they don't exceed certain thresholds, um, we're able to get them covered under like the health safety net or some form of free care. Uh, and that generally takes care of it. Um, in the event that they did exceed, you know, income thresholds, uh, you know, any kind of arrangements they would make w with your organization, um, you know, it would be independent of us. Um, we do sliding fee scales, uh, especially like on first appointments when patients um, come in and they, you know, they've never been seen before, they're not sure what insurance they have, or, or maybe they're eligible for insurance, but they don't, you know, they don't have it, they don't know what it is. Um, we do sliding scale based on just self-reported uh, income for that first visit, and then at subsequent visits, uh, you know, they go through the benefits office. So you know, a lot of our patients that have Medicare uh, end up being eligible for some form of health safety net or free care. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Excellent presentation. Oh. I think one of the statements that was made was quite appropriate. Don't sit out there and think of uh, maybe I don't have coverage or maybe it can't pay. Let Come in. There's ways that we can figure out to help you. We want to help the community. We're here to help the community. Certainly a very important part of our community is our elderly population. And as you see, uh, in 20, 30 years, it's going to double. Uh, we have 35 million elderly. The elderly population in New Bedford is growing in leaps and bounds. Uh, we're here to help you. Certainly dental health is very important. I think it was an excellent presentation by Dr. Montgomery. Very fortunate to have him on board. Thank you very much and have a good day. Thank you.